This is an extract from the Leader podcast by The Evening Standard, hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for us on your podcast provider. Shrugging off a weekend of headlines about his relationship with his brother Harry, Prince William is back to work promoting mental health awareness. This has been a football season unlike any other. The coronavirus pandemic has affected everyone, and it is clear it will have a big impact on many people's mental health. But while he's been talking to footballers and getting the entire sport to sign up to a mental health declaration as part of the Heads Up campaign, most of the conversation about the Royals remains the revelations in the book Finding Freedom, which claims to tell the real story of Harry and Meghan's departure from the royal family, including rifts between the brothers. The Evening Standard's insider editor Lucy Pavia joins me now. Lucy, Prince William's clearly ignoring all of this in public, but in private, this book must be the talk of the palaces. Yes, I mean... This uh, announcement this morning is very much what you would expect from Prince William. Um, It's very much business as usual, but obviously I'm sure that they were reading the papers over the weekend and they're well aware that people's minds are definitely elsewhere at the moment with the very explosive uh, book, Finding Freedom. Uh, which is due in August, but has been sort of serialised over the over the weekend. There had been, for quite a while now, lots of rumours about the relationship between Harry and William, but this book has really dived into those and said, yes, there is an issue there, hasn't it? I would say the book makes a number of allegations which had sort of been swirling around before the publication, but they certainly add fuel to the fire of those allegations. I mean, uh, among them is the fact that that William allegedly told Harry not to rush things with this girl, which is said to have angered Harry. Um, He's said to have told his brother that he felt he should uh, make sure he's not, he wasn't being blinded by lust in the relationship. It also alleges that there was tension between Kate and Meghan, which was reported a lot in the press um, at the beginning of their marriage. Um, and that Meghan felt she wasn't really welcomed into the royal family by Kate. It also alleges that Meghan said, you know, I gave up my entire life for this family. I was willing to do whatever it takes, but here we are, and it's very sad. So, yes, it's uh, it's it's fairly explosive, I would say. Harry and Meghan have pretty categorically denied any involvement in the writing of this book, but it does seem to portray them in a very sympathetic light, drawing out those stories about their holidays and the early days of the romance in in Botswana and and all the things that they were getting up to before the controversies began. Yes, I mean, it certainly spins a romantic picture. Um, The book was not authorised by Harry and Meghan um, officially, and they haven't contributed to it in any official way, it must be said. But having said that, the authors, Carolyn Durand and Moment Scobie, are notably uh, sympathetic, I would say, in their coverage, in their previous coverage of the Sussexes. So before publication, you know, the book was always presumed to to be a sympathetic account of uh, their exit from the royal family, and um, the result seems to sort of tally with that, yes. Does it matter at all, Lucy? Is this all just gossip, or is there a serious issue if our future king isn't getting on with his brother? I mean, there are reports today that, that the Queen is likely to be the most upset by the book, and that probably says what you need to know about its significance, really. I mean, so in 1992, um, the year that Charles and I um, and the Andrew Morton book came out, sort of detailing all the behind the scenes drama in their marriage. Um, and there was also a fire at Windsor Castle. The Queen called it her Annus Horribilis. Um, and you can't help but feel that actually 2020 is turning out to be Annus Horribilis part two, really, with their break from the royal family. Um, and then obviously everything going on with the pandemic and she's in her 90s. She's been the glue holding this whole thing together for 60 odd years. So naturally she will be worried about tensions. And, you know, there's a frustration, isn't there, that that everything felt like it was settling down with Harry and William's generation. And they used to be, you know, so close. They'd been through so much together. In the context of that, it's, it's very, very serious. I was thinking about it um, this morning. It feels like family business rift which is classic territory for family tension because you're taking all of the emotions and tensions you might have within a family anyway and you're putting them on steroids and then you add the fact that this is the most famous family business in the world and you have 
two brothers vying to run it who have very different ideas about the pecking order of that business. One of those brothers also has more power in the business, which is going to create further tensions. Um, and, and what seems to have happened, which is again classic family rifts, is you've got this sort of arms race of very sort of minor incidences, which just all seem to build up to this very hostile picture. And the conclusion appears to be that no one ends up speaking to each other. And it's just all quite sad.